Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Configuring Switches Part 1. Today we're going to talk about unmanaged versus managed switches, and then we're going to talk about spanning tree protocol. There is a whole lot of information to cover, not a lot of time, so let's jump into this session. I'm going to begin by talking about unmanaged switches and managed switches. Before we begin discussing the differences between unmanaged and managed switches, let's talk switch basics. Most switches operate at layer 2, the data link layer, of the OSI reference model. What makes a switch a switch is an application-specific integrated circuit chip, or an ASIC chip. It is used to make switching decisions in place of software. This allows switches to break up collision domains, this allows switches to run in full duplex mode, and this allows switches to make faster decisions than either bridges or routers. When a switch receives a frame on a port, it makes some simple decisions based on its media access control table, or its MAC table. It will make one of three decisions. It may decide to forward the frame. That is where the frame is directed out the port on which the destination MAC address resides. It may decide to filter the packet. That is where the frame is not directed out of ports which are not associated with the destination MAC address. The final decision that it may make is to flood the frame. The frame is flooded or sent out all of the ports on the switch except for the port on which it came in on. An unmanaged switch is a simple switch. Plug it in and it works. There is no method provided for configuration. The unmanaged switch is designed with ease of installation as its main attribute. Managed switches, on the other hand, can be configured through either the command line or a browser-based interface. Managed switches provide for a high degree of network customization and control. A managed switch can also be set up so that an administrator can monitor its performance remotely and use protocols such as SNMP to make some modifications to its configuration. Now let's move on to spanning tree protocol. Spanning tree protocol is a loop avoidance technology. A switching loop can occur on networks where there are multiple paths to reach destination MAC addresses. Digital Equipment Corporation created the Spanning Tree Protocol, or STP, to reduce the possibility of switching loops. The switches elect a root bridge to control the switched network. The switches will shut down ports that are not the best path to the root bridge, thus reducing the risk of loops. No network traffic can flow until after the STP process has taken place and a stable state has been achieved. This stable state is called convergence, and it can take a significant amount of time with STP, up to 50 seconds. After convergence, the STP selected switch ports send out bridge protocol data unit packets, or BPDU packets, to help maintain the stable state. All switch ports in an STP-enabled network can be in one of five states. First off, there is the disabled state. That is where the port is administratively shut down. It's not receiving packets, it's not sending packets, it's just completely disabled. Then there's the blocking state. In this state, the port will not forward packets, but it's still receiving BPDU packets and will drop all other frames. Then there's the listening state. In this state, the port will not forward packets, but listens to BPDU packets to make sure that no loops can occur in preparation for the next state. Then there's the learning state. In this state, the port will not forward packets, but it is learning all of the paths in the network. It is populating its MAC address table in preparation for the next state. The last state in spanning tree protocol is the forwarding state. In this state, the port will forward and receive all packets that are flowing across the network that are directed to that port. The IEEE liked STP so much that it created the 802.1D standard. 
This is their version of STP. All modern Layer 2 switches run the 802.1D standard by default. The slow convergence time of the 802.1D standard led to the creation of Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, or RSTP, which is also known as the IEEE 802.1W standard. RSTP has a much faster convergence time than 802.1D. With RSTP enabled on all switches, a network can achieve its stable state in approximately 5 seconds. That's a whole lot faster than the up to 50 seconds with the 802.1D standard. But RSTP is not turned on by default on Layer 2 switches. It must be enabled by an administrator. Instead of five possible port states, RSTP defines three possible port states. The first of these states is discarding. In this state, the port may be administratively disabled or it may be in a blocking mode or listening mode. The next state is learning. In this state, the port is populating its MAC address table in preparation for forwarding packets and the final state is forwarding. In this state, the port is actively forwarding packets. Now that concludes this session on configuring switches part one. I talked about unmanaged versus managed switches, and then I had a brief discussion on spanning tree protocol. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I look forward to doing another.